Well, congratulations. How are you feeling? I feel amazing. Is that how you pictured it going today? Yeah, absolutely. Um, just a lot of visualizations before I step out in the cage, and um, I was uh, I was hoping for a flawless victory, and I got it. You know? I know there wasn't a lot of time in there with your opponent, but what were your thoughts with him and his performance? Um, he threw me off a little bit because I was I planned on putting on a lot of a lot of pressure on him because he doesn't in the film that I've seen he doesn't do too well um, when he's getting pressured, and he kind of like he shelled up and kind of curled down. He he went below my level, so that kind of threw me off. But uh, it opened up some opportunities for me to get a takedown pretty easily. How do you adjust to something like that in there when you when you're surprised about anything? How long does it take you to kind of figure it out? Oh, split second. I'm like, oh, okay, that's still a little different, and then I just kind of kind of go with the flow. Um, my training prepared me for anything that happens in there. You know, guys switch up. I go with a lot of guys with uh, different styles, and I'm prepared for anything. Can you walk me through that finish? Okay. Um, <laughs> he got into turtle. I seen, and this is something I seen in the um, film. So, um, whenever he gets somebody takes him down, he likes to he likes to get into a turtle position. So I threw in one hook. And then um, he kind of flattened out, and uh, I went in to try to get the twister. So I had to readjust my uh, my grip a couple of times because he pushed it over his head. I end up going for a rear naked choke kind of grip. I end up trying to slide it up to his temple to kind of like press into um, to kind of like crush his spine. And as I'm in there and I'm like uh, I'm like putting pressure in, I'm like yo, I gotta I gotta break this dude's spine to make him tap, and that's what I was aiming to do, you know. So. What's next for you? How soon do you want to get back in there? I want to get in there as um, soon as possible. October is what I'm um, shooting for. Brady Heistan tagged me on the post saying he wanted to get, get back in there in um, October after he healed up. So I'm ready to take him on. And uh, last question for me. I, I don't know if you mentioned this in the interview. We didn't get to hear it. But are you aiming for that bonus? So what could you say to Dana to make him give you that bonus? For oh, I'm, yeah, I'm aiming for that bonus, 50 Gs. That's, uh, that's why I seen the Twister, too. I... Uh, I knew what kind of card I was on. They had a lot of uh, a lot of bangers on there. Even the fight before mine, there was uh, they were throwing down. So I was like, uh, a twister would definitely give me 50 Gs. So that's why I aim for it. What would you do with that bonus? 50 Gs, uh, pay my taxes. <laughs> that's a good answer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. We've seen the twister now a few times here in the UFC, but it's still pretty rare. Is that kind of a bucket list sort of item to actually end a fight on on in something so unique? Yeah. Um, I knew it was pretty rare. I didn't know how many times um, it actually been been hit, but yeah, it was definitely uh, something I wanted to do. I wanted to make history, whether it was um, be throwing the most strikes or or anything. So I made history, so it was good. And you said you, you, you used a lot of visualization out there. Did you particularly see yourself in the finish or a submission, or you just saw yourself getting your hand raised at the end. I, I see myself getting my hand raised and I go through multiple uh, victories. So I'm like, I visualize and I see different, uh, like different scenarios of me winning and one of them was a twister, for sure. Has that always been a big part of your, your fight game or is that something as you've gotten more experience and more, more fights? With more experience, my visualization has gotten a lot better and a lot stronger, for sure. And then when you're, I guess, last for me, when you're about to make that walk out there, you know, what's that moment like for you when you when you first enter into the arena and you see the crowd or you see the octagon? What's that moment like for you? It's uh, surreal. It's uh, it gives me chills every single time I start walking out there because I just knew um, this is something I, I've been dreaming about my whole entire life and it's coming to fruition. You know? That's awesome. Congrats on the win. Going over here. Congratulations. Um, after history making performance, like you just said. What message do you think that fight sent out to the rest of the Bantamweight division? I think it uh, puts a lot of guys on notice, and um, they're going to be a lot more hesitant to go to the ground with me. And I know you want that Brady Heastan fight. I mean, a lot of fans had that circled going into this week. Um, in case he's not ready or just it doesn't happen, is there any other guy you'd like to fight? Uh, nothing. Nobody comes into mind, but I'll be ready for whoever they uh, hand me. Um, I want to try to get in there as soon as possible. Awesome. Thank you. Mr. Blackshear, the answer is three, sir. Only three. You, Korean Zombie, and Bryce Mitchell. So oh, congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. Now you're going to have to move up weight class. We've got to find out who the king of the twister really is. Oh, it's How do you think about that? <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. Uh, one of the reasons, it, you don't see it a lot because the setup, it's, it's kind of dangerous, especially in the MMA fight, because if you, it's so, it's got to be timed so perfectly. If it's not, you can end up in a bad position. What did you see in there that 
that made you want to go for it? Like, did you have him rocked? I mean, you you were you beat him up pretty good on the ground. Yeah, I um, the 50 G's was a big influence on it. So I was like, let me uh, let me risk uh, um, take this risk and get into this uh, position. And then when I got there, I, I, I felt that he can elbow me, and I, I kind of embraced it. And that opened up the opportunity because his hands were locked, so I wasn't able to uh, pull off the twister. As soon as he let go of his hands, then I was able to get the finish. Yeah, I mean, honestly, we don't see it in fights. We don't, you don't even see it a lot in the practice room. You know, it's, it's hard to defend against, and a lot of people don't know really how to do it. Is it something you hit in the practice room every now and again? Yeah, I hit it a lot. Yeah. It's, my, it's one of my, uh, my tools, one of my favorite tools, for sure. Congrats again. Like I said, that's, uh, you know, only three people in UFC done that. So good job. Appreciate it. Congratulations on a win. You shared something back on June 17, 2021. So I'm going to refresh your memory. You wrote, every day we wake up, we have the opportunity to work towards a better version of ourselves. How do you feel about this version of yourself? I feel great. I feel um, I'm very proud of myself. Um, a lot of the ups and downs that I've overcome. That was over two years ago. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> where you are today. Yeah, yeah. It's been, a, it's been a long journey for sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Wait. I just heard it's your birthday. Yes, it sure is. So where, how are you going to celebrate this win then? Lots and your birthday. Lots of food. What kind of food? Um, I'm going to grab some burgers, some pizza, and uh, a milkshake. Definitely a milkshake. Awesome. Happy birthday. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it.